guys, this is Inns Toy Trip. Today I'm here with the Briar Griffin, who is number 712227. He is a 2017 Collectors Club special run. He is the Cleveland Bay or the Trigoy Journeyman mold in a uh, chestnut. He's a golden chestnut, so pretty close to Palomino, but not quite Palomino. He has a uh, shading in his mane and tail that's kind of more flaxen than Palomino, so he's definitely a chestnut. He is the braided version, uh, opposed to the loose mane version. Um, the current run on the uh, Cleveland Bay mold is the best of the British Irish draft, and he has a loose mane. So this guy has braided mane. Okay, so from what you can see in the box, um, Griffin is in the box, and then he is bubble wrapped. Um, this is my problem with Briar boxes is that they do not add extra filler. Um, so he's pretty tight in the box and he's got big, thick, sturdy legs and he's got extra wrapping. Um, so I'm actually okay with shipping this box. I just wish that they would use some filler. Um, something of note that I noticed, um, on one of the message boards was somebody, um, had commented to Briar that they didn't like them using these little boxes. And, um, I said that, you know what, the boxes, yeah, they could be bigger, but, um, it would be nice if they... Um, would add some filler because filler goes a long, long way in making sure that uh, your item and your box arrive in good shape. And Briar posted a response saying that they were trying to be eco-friendly. So, uh, from what I've seen from Briar's packing, I don't agree with that. Um, Briar is actually kind of wasteful as far as packing. They'll ship in more boxes than is necessary. Um, they'll use a ton of packing paper, so I'm not buying that. Uh, we're being environmentally friendly. Um, same with Griffin. So, sorry, Bar, that I'm just not buying that. But um, when we um, ship in those boxes, we definitely we fill them full of filler, uh, typically popcorn, which gives a lot of um, extra um, reinforcement to the box. And it takes off any pressure, like if the box is being squeezed instead of the horse being squeezed, there's an even pressure of it. Well, the horse might get some squeezing, but the, the popcorn's there too, so you wouldn't be able to just push on the leg. It would uh, kind of even out the pressure beyond the leg and, and the body and the popcorn. So um, that's kind of the point of filler. Um, usually any boxes that we receive that are really crunched don't have sufficient filler in them. Okay, off my rant on filler and on to the totally fabulous Briar Griffin. You know, I, um, he was on display at Briar Fest in the Collector's Club tent um, this year, 2017. Um, I unfortunately did not make it into the collector's tent. We were so busy doing uh, tents, tent runs um, and the open show and other things out oh, and vending out of a room art room and that we did not make in the tent so i guess the prototype for griffin was available for viewing in the briar collector's tent at briar fest uh so i'm not sure how this guy stacks up but um this is him he is very pretty i was a little worried that he was going to be kind of a lemony yellow color but um he's actually he's not he's very nice uh he has shading he even has dapples I don't know if you can see on his shoulder and his barrel and his haunch here. Uh, he's got some really pretty dapples. So this is Mr. Griffin. He has, oh, he has the darker shading on his ear tips. He has a white stripe on his face. Um, I can't tell in this lighting if he has shading on his muzzle there. He might have a little bit of pinking, but I'm not seeing it. So maybe not. He has eye lights in the back of his eyes which I actually prefer to the try eyes. I don't particularly care for the, um, how Briar uh, paints the tri-colored eyes, so I do like that. He has a very clean, um, uh, a very clean line on his sock between where it's white and then the brown color. And then uh, his hooves have the typical kind of overspray that goes a little bit up onto the coronet, which is no big deal to me. Uh, he has the uh, painted um, chestnuts, so he has gray chestnuts. Um, he has a little bit of shading on his groin area and under his tail. His VIN number is on his right hind hoof. Uh, his underbelly is signed um, Collector's Club 2017. So 
tell you, you know, this guy's actually really nice. Um, I do like him. So I think I will open one more Griffin just to see if we can pull out a variation. Um, I've heard that there are light and there are dark. Um, so we'll open one more Griffin, see what we pull out. I do like him. Um, again, if you are a current Collectors Club member, you do have access to purchase Griffin. So head on over to Briar's website and um, purchase him if you like him. I think he's, oh boy, 65 plus 14 shipping maybe. Um, again, I wrote a blog post on that, so you can look that up on our website and it, it gives you the exact breakdown and even the link to purchase Griffin directly from there. As far as I know, it's still available to you when come back. So here is Griffin number two. I don't even remember if I <laughs> showed you guys opening the box or if I did that off screen. Um, hold on, I want to, before I open this stuff, I want to get um, this other Griffin packing together. We do try to keep the original packing in pretty nice condition. So if you order through us, um, we try to keep the, the, the original packing in nice condition. Uh, a lot of the times that'll involve cutting the tape instead of taking the tape off. This is the thicker bubble wrap so it doesn't tear like um, the thinner version of Briar's bubble wrap. So I was able to just pull the tape off this one, but sometimes if you want your bubble wrap to remain intact, it's better to cut it and then remove it. Um, just kind of how it goes. Okay, so we have your fins packing all together there. And this is Griffin number two, and this is the heavier bubble wrap. I call it the good stuff. I'm going back to Briar using the smaller shipping box. I have not heard of any Griffins arriving damaged. I have heard of the boxes themselves being damaged, kind of crushed, mangled, but the horse was okay. Um, overall, Griffin really, he doesn't have any real thin parts. Um, and he's not a model that I would expect to break um, without an immense amount of pressure or um, banging around because he's got the thicker legs. He's got, um, doesn't have any like little flowing tendrils to his mane or tail. Um, what I mean by the thicker legs is say Weather Girl, she's got really thin, delicate Arabian legs. Whereas this guy, He's kind of more of a um, draft or a warm blood build, so he's got the thicker legs. Um, I think you saw this in the last video, but um, his mane or his ears and his tail are also bubble wrapped. And I am actually kind of having kind of a hard time seeing. You know, I always pick the worst times to do videos because the sun is coming up and it's shining directly in my eyes, and I know you can see it kind of reflecting on the table here. I'm throwing colors off, but. I'm just gonna go ahead and go with this, or I'm never gonna get this done. Okay, so let me gather together all of Griffin's packing. And I'm going to put his tape back on here. I don't know if anybody actually cares about the tape. If I can, I save it. If I can't, I don't. Um, but um, my priority is keeping the bubble wrap in good shape. And now I'm kind of like eyeing the other two Griffins that I have here and I'm like, hmm, maybe I should just open them too, because I really love variations. Like I guess with this is Griffin number two, um, off the bat, I'm not seeing a whole lot of variation um, from him in the first one that I opened. Again, he's this gorgeous uh, dappled chestnut color with a flaxen mane and tail. Uh, he also has the Vin on the right hind leg. He has the Collector's Club stamp on his belly. Uh, he has the eye whites. I'm trying to look on his muzzle here to see if he has any shading. So this guy in particular has a little um, rub on his nose. Um, so I'll give him a, a uh, closer look. Um, if he has more flaws than just this rub on his nose, I'm going to try to exchange him with Briar. Um, 
I don't exchange for just like real minor things because chances are with Briar you will um, just receive something just as bad if not worse. So that's kind of my take on it. Um, I just returned some um, well, my Duende, who I'm not sure that I'll get a replacement for. Okay, I'm just going to open the rest of these uh, wonderful garments. But back to Duende. Um, Duende was so riddled with flaws that so many people returned him. I'm not sure that they have any extras to give. And that really bums me because that is a horse. The horse. The horse that I joined the Premier Club for. And he was so flawed. And um, I was just totally bummed. So I don't know if I'll be getting a replacement on him. I also recently returned um, one, two, three, four Briar Hollies. Um, I ordered some of the, the Holly the Elephant um, from the Briar Fast Leftovers. Holly the Elephant had uh, decal stickers on her. And um, she ended up this really weird scaly color. It's like the glue that they used to adhere the decals um, was uh, transparent and probably invisible until maybe it was applied to heat. And what happened was uh, um, all that glue over her body then became visible. It became like this kind of this cloudy, thin lined, and it looked literally like scales. It looked like Holly had grown scales. Um, it was completely unacceptable and it wasn't just like in little spots. Um, I think to some extent all the Hollies have decal problems, but this was um, bad. And, um, I asked Briar for a return, and they said, oh, we're not doing returns on the Briar Fest leftovers. And I said, okay, but let me show you what I have. And I sent them pictures of Holly, and Briar agreed. They said, whoa, that's really bad. Um, so <laughs> they allowed me to return Holly. I'm hoping for replacements. Um, and I requested that um, they inspect the ho replacement Hollies before a reshipping them. And I do know that Briar has said this in the past and um, not followed through with reinspecting. So, you know, I still think it's just a um, kind of a hit or miss, but I'm hoping that the replacement Hollies are nicer. And that was all on a tangent um, about that Griffin and his nose rope. So I'm hoping for the most part that these Griffins are nice. I don't want to deal with um, returns with Briar. For those of you who have not dealt with returns with Briar, um, Briar will send you a return label, so you can just uh, print that from your computer. Um, it goes back via UPS, so you um, tape the label to the box and you bring it to a store that accepts UPS, which could be like your local mail store or uh, UPS if you have an actual UPS store. And you send it back to Briar, and then um, they receive it and they either process your refund or they send you a replacement. And Briar can be extremely slow on um, processing these. I don't know if it's just the number of um, return requests that they get or if it's um, the bookkeeping or whatever. But um, usually after 30 days, I'll touch base with Briar again and say, hey, what's going on with my order? And I have had it take several months to receive a refund or a replacement, but I have not um, ever not received a refund or replacement from Briar. So that is, expect to have to follow up with Briar if you do a return. Um, Kirsten Chalupa, um, she uh, worked for Briar. She was wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Um, I used to contact her directly about returns and she always took care of me. And wonderful Kirsten just retired from Briar, so she is no longer there. Uh, so my favorite, favorite contact at Briar is gone, which is a total bummer. So um, now I'm dealing with customer service. Just to give you an idea of time frame, um, I wrote customer service directly from the Briar uh, website using their contact, whatever, ask for help. It took about a week and um, I got a response from the representative um, in regards to Holly and Duende. They said, hey, um, here, or you may return your Duende and they issued a return label. So after a week, I had a return label on Duende and I think that's because Duende was so flawed that they were just kind of taking people's words of if, if they claim that he was flawed, then um, that he was flawed. And so I had that return label and I shipped one day back and they said, um, uh, let's see Holly. So um, I sent pictures of Holly and then I think it was probably about two weeks after I sent the pictures of Holly um, that the Briar uh, customer service representative wrote back and said, um, okay, yeah. That's a really bad flaw on Holly. You can return them. 
And so, oh, I'm just going to point out here on his tail, he has some gray marks. I'm just kind of looking for flaws and variations as I'm rambling on here. And um, I had ordered um, four Hollies and they were on two different orders. So Briar issued two um, um, shipping labels to go back for four boxes, which um, I understand because that's how the order was placed. Um, they were also ordered along with other horses so that it wasn't just the Hollies in those boxes. So it kind of annoyed me that I couldn't ship them all in one box um, and, and that I had to go and find a box, to, two boxes to fit those Hollies. Um, because the big the, the boxes that they originally came in since they were uh, combined with other horses were huge So I had to find two boxes to ship two shipments of Holly and so Briar Paid basically for two shipping labels and something that could have been shipped in one box in my opinion uh, so to me I Mean Briar, I guess it's just easier for them to process returns and refunds like that, but um, They could have saved money if I had just been able to ship them together Okay, so that is the only real flaw that I saw on Griffin here. Um, I, I'm thinking that this is mostly on his white. Um, if you have a horse who has marking marks, like darker gray marks or flaws on the white, um, one of my tricks for getting those off is using a magic eraser, um, which you can find um, basically any grocery store, Walmart, anything like that. It's in the cleaning section. So I just noticed something on the inside of this guy's leg, and I thought they were rubs right here on the inside of his hock. And I ran my finger over it, and it's kind of this gummy, um, almost like glue, sticker residue. So that came off, so that's okay. Uh, not seeing anything too major. So um, this guy, Griffin, he is so much, so much, so much, so much, so much better than Duende, which is nice. And I'll go ahead and note we'll open our very last Griffin. Uh, and then I'll line them up, but I'm not seeing a lot of uh, variation in the Griffins that we got. I would love to see any Griffin variations if you received a particularly dark one or a particularly light one. Post a picture. I'd love to see it. This, um, but this um, mold was sculpted by Karen Gerhardt, who is a well-known artist in the hobby. She, um, she sculpts artist resins and she um, does um, clinkies. I am not a clinky person. I don't know the difference between china and porcelain. So um, that is what Karen specializes in nowadays. Um, fragile model horses and they are just exquisite beautiful detail uh, beautiful sculpting so her name is Karen Gerhardt and um, gosh her studio name I want to say is Westerly or West West something design but look her up she does very beautiful work to date I believe this is the only mold that Karen has sculpted for Briar Not one day. Griffin looks just like the others. Okay, so Briar used uh, UPS Sure Post to ship these guys. Our, our typical transit time from um, where Briar ships from New Jersey to us here in a rather remote area of California is about 10 days. So we gotta get our stuff last because we're furthest from Briar. So it's kind of a note if, you know, our um, postings and videos come out a little later than um, the models you've seen released from other people. Um, part of that is um, it takes an extra long time in transit for the models to get to us. And um, we're really busy, so we can't always get these opened right away. And there's something funky going on with this guy's blaze. Um, it's almost like his plastic is darker on his blaze. You can definitely see a little bit of, of um, edging. Um, like there's kind of like a metallic coat underneath his, his chestnut coat that you can see 
just around the edges on his stripe. I'm not sure if you can pick it up or if this, um, my phone, I use my phone for my videos, is picking it up. I actually have a really nice camera um, and <laughs> for the life of me I cannot figure out how to get it to work nicely for videos. It's one of those SLR cameras and um, when you take a video it um, is constantly trying to focus. So that lens is moving back and forth and things go in and out of focus and I don't know how to fix it so I just use my phone for videos. Yeah, it looks almost like, um, like his blaze is maybe narrower than the other griffins. We'll take a look at that in just a second. Um, he has the bin on the bottom of his right hind leg and this one definitely, um, you can see that he has kind of a a uh, flesh tone shading to the top of his muzzle. It's not pink, it's more flesh toned. And this one has um, more um, overspray than the other ones on his um, his socks, but where um, his hooves uh, meet the white. And it's not real obvious. It's not something, you know, that I would call unrealistic because hey they're horses they get dirty up you know on their socks they're not going to have like white white socks but he you can definitely see that there is some some subtle overspray going from um his hoof over his coronet and then up to his fetlock and actually it kind of looks sort of neat um it's not uh it's not spattery it's, it's not um real obvious it's kind of subtle and honestly it looks kind of nice so he has, let's see here, um, lots of nice dapples. He he goes from a dark chestnut on the top of his tail to a, uh, a lighter yellow, kind of a sorrel color, and then the tip of his tail goes down to white. Um, and he has the darker shading on his belly. This one has the um, kind of a darker uh, line um, going from his groin area to the middle of his belly. Okay, so let's see if we can see what's going on with this guy's blaze. We will pull maybe another griffin. We'll line him up here. Okay, I, sorry, I need to tilt him to look at him and then I will tilt him so that you can look at him. I'm trying really hard to figure out what's going on here and I'm not um, seeing exactly what's going on. So this guy, um, if you look in person, this one here on the right, his blaze is darker and it's like the paint is kind of darker around the edges of his blaze. Whereas this guy, he's just kind of um, the same color on the front of his nose. So I don't, I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but it's almost like the plastic's darker and then there is a, a visible um, edge around um, his stripe there. So that uh, one and I'm going to compare it to another one this is just kind of I'm trying to figure out what's different it's like you know there's um in the highlights magazine they have those little pictures of what's different between those pictures so I'm kind of playing what's different between these griffins uh, I'm wondering if it's because okay I think this guy has a darker face overall than this one so I'm thinking maybe he has some darker shading on the front of his face, uh, which might have gotten a little bit onto the plastic. And um, I'm going to just show you now that I, I'm noticing this is a bit of a variation. He has more dark shading around his eyes than the other griffin. Um, his muzzle is probably about the same, if not a little bit darker. Um, this guy is the one with the nose rub and he has um, just, it's barely noticeable, this um, flesh tone on his muzzle. Uh, this one, um, you can definitely see that there's kind of a flesh tone on his muzzle. It's not real dark. It's not big um, pink. It's not bright pink. And I almost knocked this griffin over here, so I'm going to put him back. And then um, maybe we can compare this side of their faces. Uh, so this guy definitely has um, some darker shading around his eyes. Uh, He's nice. I do kind of like that. Um, so it's almost like, to me, um, either this guy has thicker paint or he might even be a chalky underneath. And a true chalky, um, 
historically would have a, a base coat covering the entire body. Um, but sometimes Briar does a partial base coat, um, like we saw on some of the Huynes where just the uh, just under the paint is um, base coated and I'm almost thinking that's what this guy is because his color is just it's just different from these other griffins and we'll go ahead and we'll compare him to some more because I think the more I look at him the more I'm thinking that this guy might be chalky underneath his um, yellow color and I'm going to see you guys can't see this but I'm holding him up to the sunlight up here um, and it's almost like on this this one um, you can see just a little bit of translucent um, and the light shining through and this one which I think might be a chalky you don't see any of the light shining through so mystery solved I um, I'm going to go with this this fellow right here is a uh, perhaps a, um, a modern chalky in that his he has a chalky coat underneath and I wish I wish I could show you guys what I'm seeing, um, but there's just kind of this glow. Can you see that? You can kind of see the glow through the plastic, the sunlight streaming through the window over here. So this is a um, just a normal griffin. And then um, this is what I think is a base coat chalky griffin. See how the sunlight doesn't shine through him at all? I don't know if I can get them next to each other, but here you see see the sort of translucentness, and um, this is the chalky one where you don't see any of that translucent color. So now I have the more translucent one in the back, and I have the chalkier one in the front. And again, you're just not seeing the sunlight coming through, and I think that's the difference we're seeing. So we'll do one more comparison. This was the first griffin that I opened, I think. Um, I see that he has a little bit of gray on his main braids here. Now, um, in this case, I would not recommend using a magic eraser to take these marks off because his mane is uh, shaded kind of a, a sorrel color. And if you used a magic eraser, that would take off his um, the yellowish paint as well. So I wouldn't recommend that. You can kind of see him. Okay, how he's translucent with the sunlight coming through. So maybe it's kind of a mixed blessing that I did this video while the um, sunlight was out. Because you see that? I'm pretty sure. Hopefully you guys can see that. I know, I'm obsessing over my variation. I'm like, ooh, it's a variation griffin. So this, not chalky, see-through. See that light shining through? And this one, potentially chalky um, griffin light does not shine through. Um, uh, this um, variation also occurred on, um, I'm sure it occurred on a lot of models, but off the top of my head, uh, Jesse, who was Tractor Supply Special Run, came in a kind of a, a chalky, and Quinn, the Doppelgrey Mustang Mare, who is a current run, also came in chalky, uh, and not, not the full-blown chalky where you see the, the painted white on the socks, but just under the the painted part. And I see that I have been rambling and rambling and rambling on this video. I'm sorry, I hope I have not bored you guys, but I I, I just love opening Briar, so really I do have one of the coolest jobs ever. Um, I think these guys are all fairly similar in color, aside from this guy, who I believe to be Chalky. Uh, everybody else um, it's pretty much the same shade, not really darker or lighter. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I'd love to see pictures of your griffin. And I think that's it. I think that's all I have for now. I just need to decide this one with a nose rub if I'll try to exchange him with Briar or not. Alrighty. That's all I have to say for now. Um, I can't thank you guys enough for watching. Uh, your support is very much appreciated. Um, yep, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching.